agenda uh, for this boot camp and uh, why why you wanted to this uh, why you wanted to do this uh, boot camp is because we really understand uh, the the aspect that in the uh, in the, the in the coming months not even years uh, there is uh, it's there, there is already has been a huge huge demand for uh, cloud based uh, uh, i would say uh, professionals all across the globe and obviously in india because india is like uh, one of the major countries which uh, supplies i would say professionals and individuals all across the globe uh, so in in that in that regards uh, what we wanted uh, is i is like to design a session for you for you guys to uh, you know uh, understand uh, what what basically is the scenario of of cloud and why uh, uh, like what is happening in the industry in terms of of cloud and data engineering data engineering is the uh, another i would say uh, new emerging trend uh, which is which is really getting very popular and uh, terms like ml ops or uh, productionizing your machine learning models or cloud computing uh, these terms are something which uh, which are really gathering a lot of buzz uh, right so the session is designed uh, to you know uh, have that kind of a free discussion right so feel free to ask as many questions as uh, as many queries that you have um, we would not want to, you know, do a lot many things, achieve a lot many things in the session. We want to make it simple. We want to make it as possible, and we want to make it more important, informative, and uh, and give you guys uh, a strong, I would say, a heads up in terms of uh, how this uh, this industry is evolving, and. Uh, what you should watch out for right uh, and and that and that's and and what we are talking about is in a span of i would say uh not just six months or not just one year we are talking about a span of next five years uh, or at least three years uh, or down the line uh, right from from an industry perspective from a skills perspective uh, and what want to change so uh, in this regards uh, uh uh let's let's begin the session so uh, the session name, as you see, is Python on cloud. Uh, so uh, the session focuses on using uh, on Python uh, as a as a programming language. Obviously, there is no uh, I would say no requisites for you guys to know Python and uh, you know uh, like have a very strong programming and coding skills uh, right now. Uh, I will I will talk to it uh, like what's uh, what's uh, what's basically goes on into the cloud and we'll also try to do a, a live case uh, uh, using an, a cloud-based uh, I would say platform right uh, at the at the end of the session I hope all of that permits within the time and uh, I would say the most importantly uh, um, is I want it to be as interactive as possible so uh, I would say feel free to ask as much as uh, as much any questions that you have uh, any, any, uh, and and that can be even with this topic. And if you, if you have something else, uh, feel free to drop it in the chat box, or feel free to you know uh, unmute and ask. I I would really, really encourage and really, really look forward to that because that's uh, that's what we are really. Uh, uh, that's how that's how I think uh, we will really have a takeaway from the session. So don't don't just uh, you know listen to it. I would say ask. I'm sure all of you guys have have got some kind of agenda in your mind, some kind of objective in your mind uh, while you are uh, attending this session, right? So you you have. I, I'm sure you guys have some sort of interest, some sort of uh, I would say alignment with cloud and data science or data engineering, or maybe maybe the interest to you know learn and uh, uh, fast track your career, right? So that's that's basically uh, what we uh, the plan of the session is. Uh, we don't want to you know boast uh, jargons and uh, um, make you guys uh, confused. We want to be very simple, very exact, very precise, and uh, you know be uh, and 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 have a very clear cut idea of uh, of what uh, cloud is or what what really goes uh, into it uh, from I would definitely from an overview perspective. And um, and what you should expect from the from the uh, from this industry and how from from the years, right? 
So that's that. Uh, I will also quickly introduce myself. Uh, I think I need to use the session. So my name is Arpendu and uh, I am a data scientist. Uh, I'm working as a data science manager uh, in Accenture AI, uh, um, having a work experience of uh, almost seven years in, in, I would say, consulting, data science, strategy. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, with IV, I think uh, I've been, I've been, I've been, been long for, or almost five years, um, a part of the about the corporate uh, and classroom trainings. Uh, uh, yeah, so I have changed. I've seen this industry. I think and my only impression is that uh, uh, is that I've seen this industry, you know, evolve uh, in these years. And I also I also come from a very I would say non programming background. I did not have a computer science. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how I see this industry. So I have been outside of this industry and. Uh, right now, I really know how this industry works or uh, how this industry is evolving. So, uh, so I, I really understand the, the both sides of it. Uh, so I really understand like when you see the industry and, and you, I'm sure you have a lot of questions like how this industry works or I have, let's say, these experience or I do not have these skill set. How do how should I go about it and all of that, right? So uh, uh, it's it's a fast tracking industry and 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 there's a lot lots lot to evolve and and it's it's evolving at a high pace, right? Uh, but but definitely, uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, you know, anywhere, any point of time, just feel free to uh, shoot. Okay, uh, I want you guys to be as interactive as possible, and uh, uh, that's that's I think would be the real takeaway for all of us to this session. Okay, so I'll I'll take a pause. Um, uh, feel free to use the chat box. Feel free to uh, you know un uh, unmute yourself and ask. So uh, you know just just raise your hand or you know just interrupt me and I will be happy to answer your your uh, your questions. Okay. So I uh, I will put down the agenda. Uh, you know take you through the agenda. So uh, I want to really discuss about uh, what's why we are talking about cloud. I am sure you guys have. Some kind of overview, some kind of uh, of insights, but uh, but I really want to put some data. Uh, we all always work with, with data, right? Uh, on why cloud is important and how it is uh, how it is very important, right? And also in front of uh, uh, the rise of data engineering. So we have been talking about uh, data science or data analysis, right? So there has been a rise of of data engineering. It's again in an evolving stage, but uh, there is a huge demand uh, for data engineers or machine learning engineers, right? Uh, so I won't really talk about it. Uh, quick insight, some quick numbers, especially from India. Uh, we live in India and uh, uh, it's always good to know uh, what's happening or, or how uh, we see this uh, industry growing, right? And uh, in all of this, uh, how get Python gets connected, right? So Python is the winner uh, from a skill set point of view, from a programming point of view. So I really don't want to talk about Python, how Python is a differentiator how knowing Python and how knowing Python in cloud uh, is really, really, uh, uh, is, is a really, really, I would say, integral and essential skill set um, that anyone who wants to be part of this industry um, have, right? And also uh, Python in cloud, all right? So, uh, so and when you're talking about Python, how Python gets integrated with, with cloud, right? And and finally, we'll try to, you know, run a, in a, a, a some, net, uh, some, some really um, run from uh, some Python scripts, right? And, uh, you know, uh, extract data on at, at apply at a real time uh, using, we're using Colab. Uh, it's, it's a, uh, I'm sure many of you guys already know it, uh, but uh, for people who do not know it, it's basically a, it's a cloud-based Jupyter environment. It's a Python environment uh, uh, powered by Google, right? So that's that's basically from a, uh, I'll just try to show you like how it works. And, what, and the most important thing is not about uh, you know, it's in the one hour, it's not really, uh, we'll not be able to, you know, uh, have all understanding of codes and all of that, but, uh, but really from an, from a perspective point of view, what you want to understand is like, uh, why, uh, it's, it's so, uh, you know, so, so demandable and, uh, uh, post pandemic, post COVID-19, uh, yes, data science already had, had a lot of demand, but post pandemic, uh, post this COVID-19, right. Uh, there has been a structural change in a lot of companies, a lot of companies, and I'm sure you guys are working professionals and you yourself have, have seen that change, right? Uh, so in, in that change, in that context, uh, how this, uh, the data part of it, uh, how companies are able to, you know, uh, have a redesigned focus and how in all of this, uh, if, if one can have the right skill set, 
he can really uh, he or she can really you know uh, get some um, from some great offers and and some uh, uh, really fast track your career right so that's basically an agenda okay i will i'll stop for a moment uh, uh, uh please let me know if you have any questions okay uh, even in the chat box or if you want to tie, if you want to you know unmute yourself so, so so just feel free okay okay so i have a question from uh, shantani uh, how much python knowledge is necessary for a digital marketer who wants to be social media data analyst okay uh, see uh, it's, it's a good question shantani uh, uh, you already uh, i i i assume uh, from your question that uh, you already are, are into the digital space you're in the digital marketing space and you want to be like uh, get into uh, the data analysis field, uh, especially uh, with respect to social media right so python is a tool uh, it's a it's an integral tool i would say okay uh, especially from the uh, if you are really looking uh, forward to you know uh, making models and uh, doing predictions uh, right with respect to social media obviously and using digital data using digital uh and data or digital marketing yeah there are there is a lot of scope in digital marketing with omni channels with multiple channels multiple touch right uh, how the customers are you know behaving uh, part to coaches behavior so there are so many things uh, as a part of of digital marketing uh, so digital marketing in itself is a very growing field right uh, so if you if you add a skill set from python okay it really boosts up your uh, i'd say likelihood of of of, you know, of getting a job uh as as a as a social media data scientist i would say more of uh, not a data analyst right because i really want all of you to go into a data science uh, or a data engineering uh, uh you know profile so uh scenario 1 was scenario 2 scenario 1 where you do not have a scenario 2 where you have okay scenario 1 is like uh, you will be part of it's not like you cannot get a uh, job or you cannot get a opportunity you can uh but i would say the opportunities will be limited or uh, you know the scope of growing can be limited right so uh, but when you really, really add a skill set like python or you know cloud based uh, uh uh things right so it really uh, turns uh, really changes your profile okay and uh, it's 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 not that you need to really get into some uh, high level object oriented coding uh, but you know some basics of, of python obviously uh, more you know it's always better uh, and, and and the ability to you know integrate with some kind of cloud services uh, it presents you with the ability to be uh, you know absorbed by any any organization okay any organization which are who are dealing with digital marketing uh, because you already have a prior experience to that so just to cut short and to answer your question like in in one line uh, i gave the explanation i guess uh how necessary it's like um, i would say 60 70% uh, i or maybe 80% it's necessary um uh, if you are really targeting this field right if you are really targeting okay i want to you know continue with strategy or digital marketing itself it might not be but if you really want to get into the data data part of it okay so in that case uh python becomes a tool to handle the data analyze the data and that's why uh it becomes uh much much uh, uh importance is it okay okay others uh, uh also let me know if you have any questions again feel free to ask uh unmute uh, yourself and ask or drop uh, drop uh, in in the chat box okay okay so uh let's let's begin the session let's really talk about some uh, some things like why cloud okay so uh, we have been talking about like cloud is uh, you know uh, getting into the uh, yeah we are all talking about cloud okay i will i will i will give you the numbers and through you the numbers okay uh, but before that i will give you a very micro example okay uh, uh, i'm i'm sure like uh, we all uh, have experienced that uh, remember in the school days okay uh, when we used to uh, you know watch, uh, how you watch a movie how do you used to watch a movie or or you know let's say watch your favorite uh, favorite show how, how you used to do it uh, anyone wants to answer like let's say you want to watch a movie or play a game how do you want to how you used to, how you used to do it tv right or, you know even though we have laptops 
used to get in a pen drive, right? Or a CD. Yeah. Or, or maybe uh, you used to visit those uh, like video game, game parlors and, and play, right? I, I hope all uh, agrees with me. Yeah. Yes, but, sir. Yeah, yeah. So that's 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 how we used to do it, right? Uh, have we had we imagined at that time, like if I want to watch a show, uh, I can really watch so many shows in my in my mobile, right? Right now, we all like generally, I would say people do watch uh, shows or or you know uh, news or whatever, and in, 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 in their in their in their in their and their maybe tabs or in their mobile phones, not even laptops, I would say, right? Uh, so, uh, so from a memory point of view, okay, just from a memory point of view, just try to imagine these two scenarios, right? Watching the ability to watch, you know, hundred random shows at any point of time, at that point of, at this point of time versus, you know, we really struggle, you know, okay, I need to go get a pen drive, copy the data, and then the files will be transferred and then I can start watching. So it's a change it's it's a complete change and why i brought this example is from a consumer point of view right we have a user's point of view so from a user point of view we know that uh, it's it's an remarkable change in the way we are you know dealing with the data okay and now just to add on okay uh, especially after the covid okay the the entire world was you know was hit okay everyone was you know stuck in their homes we we were we were all uh, stuck in their homes. The only thing that we had is what our laptops, our 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 phones, right? That's the only way we are communicating or interacting with the world we are working, right? So, or or you know uh, maybe ordering something. So even the groceries and everything. So everything was made digital, and uh, the amount of this, uh, I would say, the capacity of 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 the uh, of the uh, the data that we were generating or the data that was being generated right so i think uh, there was this uh, tweet from grofer's ceo just before i think pm modi was trying to give an announcement he was not he did not made a next lockdown but i think he he talked about like maybe i'm not sure about the numbers maybe some 7 million cuts right 7 million cuts uh, they were there uh, ready to you know uh, check out uh, because no one is sure that uh, what what's the next move uh, from our prime minister, right? Uh, so in in that case, uh, what we are referring is that so much is happening and so much is happening in the cloud. Okay, where is all this happening? Right, it's all happening in the in the cloud. So data, uh, the apps that you're using, everything is integrated with the web. And when you say web, it's actually the cloud. So everything is gets attached to the web to the cloud. And uh, this entire thing is uh, is is working right now. Uh, this this is a very micro example from a macro example, right? So I've just tried to put down the numbers: eighty percent, eighty-one percent, right? So four by five, like out of four out of five, four companies have reported that they need a or they have a multi-cloud strategy, right? Laid out. So four out of five companies wants to have a multi-cloud a cloud strategy in place, right? End of 2021, 67% of all enterprises will be cloud-based and which are not, they are leaving behind. And that's the major reason, right? There is an enormous demand in the space because companies want to really, uh, I would say, uh, uh, the companies which are not data-driven or they're not using analytics or not using data science, they really want to you know, shift and they want to uh, not run out of the space, right? So a lot of traditional companies are now uh, really thinking of the business models and seeing like, okay, how do I uh, work, right? So there's a company, uh, there's Target, okay? Target is a, I'm, I'm not sure how many of you guys uh, are aware of it. I'm sure many of you are. Uh, it's basically a big retail in US, right? It's basically was driven by a lot of store sales, right? So imagine Big Bazaar, okay? Big Bazaar, we know it's, 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 a, it's a store, right? We mostly relate Big Bazaar. Uh, to a store, visiting the store and buying things, right? But now in this in the in this competitive digital space, when we when we uh, even we are even <laughs> maybe uh, ordering a, a simple you know some green tea, <laughs> we we are ordering it online, yeah. So uh, that's that's basically a shift that has happened, and that's why even the traditional companies 
rethink their models, right? And in that case, obviously, cloud is becoming so omnipresent, so essential, right? And um, um, I, I, I found this statistic very, very interesting, right? Uh, this particular statistic uh, in this case, okay, the average person okay uses 36 cloud-based services every single day, okay. So you can you can yourself count the number of apps you're using, maybe WhatsApp, uh, and maybe some social media accounts, right? Uh, maybe some productivity accounts, some time management accounts, some um, uh, you know office uh, office related accounts, right? So 36, okay, that that's the number, and. Uh, we are referring in this case is like from a from a from a product point of view, from a producer point of view. Uh, there's so much of demand uh, to you know manage these apps to manage the data, right? Because all of this is basically relating to a lot of data. Okay, basically everything that we are doing is is resulting in data. Now companies are not sure that how to analyze this data. Okay, they are not sure because so much of data is generated. They do not know how to handle the data. They do not have a data strategy, or they do not have the skill set, uh, and they do not they do not really know like how to you know use this data to generate insights or you know uh, build uh, so called ML models, right? Um, and so in in this case, this entire these percentages, okay, they they really they really are 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 telling the story that how uh, cloud has become a very very important part of the of the uh, of our our you know our, our lifestyles and and not just from a user but obviously from a uh, from the from the uh, industry point of view right um, some interesting and this these are really numbers at a at a at a global level uh, all of these like 94 to 94 percent of all enterprises use cloud services 48 percent of businesses use data on the cloud they store data on the cloud okay human error is to blame for cloud which is 88 percent of cases sorry. Uh, three by four, right? Cloud security. Security is a top concern when you're when you're doing cloud. So in that case, having those skills, uh, being able to you know uh, define the roles and all of that, huge demand. Okay, 2025, 100 zettabytes of data stored in the cloud. Okay, so one uh, one zettabyte is equal to one billion terabytes. Okay, or one one trillion gigabytes. So uh, this is a huge number, guys. This particular number is a huge. Okay. Now, okay, we can say that, uh, okay, Arpindu, you know, you guys, you are always telling about this, about this, so much of data is getting generated, but what should I do with that? I only need a job in this sector and I, that's it. Uh, what, what should I really do with these numbers? Okay. Now, why I'm putting these numbers or why I'm trying to, you know, put this perspective is that it's, there is a huge demand. Okay. Uh, 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 there will be continuous growing of this demand. Okay, at least for the next four or five years, okay, uh, and the pandemic had added to the demand, uh, and having the right skill set, okay, and having the right, I would say, know how, really puts up you in a place. So uh, I, I'm just trying to give a perspective that scenario where let's say the COVID didn't happen and everyone was like going the way they used to work. No, not much of I would say added space of digitalization, right? So the versus this scenario where everyone is working digitally. Okay, so the demand has has become higher. Okay, so if you had you know had plans of you know switching or uh, thinking about this career, so now this uh, this this has become much more uh, I would say uh, demandable given given uh, given you know the change of uh, change how the organizations are working, right? So I've tried to put this uh, put this statement from Devjani Bose, uh, who is the NASCOM president, that uh, uh, ten, uh, the demand for digital skills today is including cloud is around eight to ten, ten times. Than the supply, okay, that's a big number, eight to ten times higher uh, than these uh, uh, than the supply. So there are not much people out there, but uh, eight to ten times is is higher the uh, the the, uh, the the demand, and we can make a potential. We can realize the full potential of the cloud and making uh, India the talent nation of the world, right? So again, uh, what these things are really saying is that the demand is huge, okay. Uh, it's just like we need to really put our Put uh, the skill set, the right skill set, at place, and uh, uh, and then the likelihood of, of getting absorbed by your organization uh, really really increases. Okay, so the you know the uh, basically the entire I would say the crux of these numbers are giving this perspective is that 
cloud is on the rise and in any ways if you are you know if you want to align if you are thinking of aligning or want to align or right now if you are aligning right it's it's a very apt time okay and uh, it's 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 the booms the boom in any sector comes once it stays and then it starts uh, declining okay what has happened for data science and now with the data engineering which i will i'll speak in a few moments is that um, people really want to automate things people really want to put things on cloud and work uh, there uh, um, with uh, with you know at least uh, because the volume of data has become so huge okay it is impossible to uh, store them on premise sorry when i say on premise it simply means store L- let's say you have some uh, uh, some almira in your backyard and you want to store right so that's what on premise means right so that's basically because has become a traditional model everyone wants to store things on cloud and process the data on cloud okay so everything is like cloud based that's what on cloud means okay now in this case in this entire thing uh, uh, is a new emergence of of data engineering okay so uh, i'm sure few of you guys or many of you guys how many of you have heard about data engineering by the way in this in this crowd like how many of you know what data engineering is or or you know uh, 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 basically know about it okay harsh knows shabam okay okay all okay some of you say yes some of you know okay what about what about others again guys i want you guys to really really speak on this uh, uh so what what is your perspective on data engineering and how it differs from data science okay for example i i will i belong to more of a data science background right or data science work i uh, but uh, but there is a clear cut distinction which is happening in in data engineering right uh, okay great harsh is working already working as a data engineer so uh, he can obviously relate well and uh, and uh, you know ha- have the have the actual facts okay but but for the larger audience okay so let me let me try to speak about it okay so uh, data engineering uh, again the idea is objective is to give you a perspective is to give you a very clear perspective guys is like what is it and how it is operating okay or how things are changing okay and what i am trying to say is is a difference of couple of years like from 2018 2019 2021 okay so till 28 19 2020 i would say pre covid there was a continuous demand for data science data scientists right uh, the dev was uh, it was not like there was not a demand of data engineers there was a demand but now suddenly this, the demand has boomed up okay the demand for data engineers has boomed up now what is it uh really may uh, really uh, let me talk about it so data engineers how they differ from data scientist is that data scientists really work on i would say building the frameworks of a model let's say uh, we are working on a machine learning model so what could be the algorithm used what would be the analytics what could be the you know the how the model be tuned trained and all of that right so really we really, really work with the frameworks or uh, we really work with the uh, you know or the meta mode of it okay now what data science data engineers do or how data scientists and data engineers collaborate they basically make it productionalized okay so just to give you a very simple example uh how many of you guys are aware of uh of of well, let's say let's try to use a simple technique linear regression here how many of you are aware of what linear regression is none of you some of you most of you linear regression others little bit i am just trying it's it's i am not get into linear regression don't worry i am just trying to give you a perspective just try an example okay so basically for people who do not know uh, linear regression is basically a, let's say econometric model okay the model which you run okay to get some predictions okay it enables you to get some predictions example of that would be let's say uh, you want to you know predict uh, what would be the uh, oil prices for tomorrow you can run a model and you can get the forecast okay so people for people who do not know uh, that's basically the i would say one of the objectives of of running 
any kind of uh, i would say machine learning model right now what is happening is that let's say you have you have trained a model okay uh, you have trained a model in the local you have write, written a nice code and all of that and it really works on a on a batch data which means you wrote, you have a csv file in your or excel file in your desktop or laptop you imported that file you ran the model you got some forecast okay all with me in that all will be in this in this till this uh, point of the example i hope right now 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 uh, what was the complication is let's say now i forecasted it let's say for maybe one day for one machinery now let's say i want to do it for 10 uh, million machineries or let's say not 10 million machineries 10000 machineries daily can i do this daily can one person really you know uh, <laughs> you know run 10000 models every day on is it it is impossible right it is impossible for a person to do so the data scientist will what he will he or she will do he will write that code uh, to you know uh, basically how to forecast or how to you know uh, basically run uh, have the algorithm in place what data engineers will do okay is basically make it uh, productionalized bring them in the production environment right uh, what i mean to say is that is use this model and basically create a pipeline okay and uh, uh, basically build uh, a, a, a flow, right? Where continuously every day, 10,000 models are being trained without any human intervention. Okay. And your predictions are getting generated. Okay. Now that's what the, the role of, of a data engineering is. Sounds interesting. I hope. And it is, I, I, will, I will tell you it's, it's now it is highly demanded by, by companies. Why? Because now people are dealing with uh, uh, with huge amount of data. One, second is they want to really make more faster predictions and more accurate predictions. Because com companies have become so competitive, they do not want to really lose their share. They do not want to you know become obsolete. So one example of, of a company which became obsolete was Nokia. Okay, Nokia could not really uh, I would say catch up with the competitors, and hence it became obsolete. So companies really do not want. Okay. So in that case, basically the role of data engineers who can deploy models in a pipeline and make them uh, productionalized. Okay, that's how it becomes. Uh, they become really, really important. Okay, so yes, I've written is a, a simple snippet of what's the difference between data engineering and data analyst. Okay, so data scientist and data uh, analyst. Okay, they uh, uh, they basically glean knowledge and insights. Okay, data engineers. Okay. Uh, basically build systems for collecting, validating, and preparing the high-quality data, uh, and gather and prepare the data to promote better business decisions. Okay, so data scientists are more towards business, more towards, you know, building the fine model, but data engineers are really basically building the systems. Okay, so out of all of this word, the word I want to really highlight, okay, the word I really want to highlight is this word, which is systems. Okay. So they basically build the systems, pipelines, um, I would say. Uh, Harsh, I think uh, you would agree to this. Uh, uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, that you guys really built pipelines or systems or processes, which basically where from where the data is getting consumed, okay? And the data becomes easily, uh, uh, you know, can be used for building a model, okay? So you can you guys can even, uh, you know, deploy this model. And this basically the forecast is happening. Okay. Now this part of the code, okay. This is this part of the code where we are really, you know, training the model or doing all those sort of data science things. Okay. Forgive me for my drawing. This part of the data scientist, but because, but this entire pipeline, okay. Deploying this entire pipeline becomes the role of data engineers. So again, from the perspective of, of today's world, from the perspective of companies, this is a huge skill. This is a great skill to have. And companies are really, really uh, uh, are, 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 are watch out for this kind of skill. Okay. Now, how we basically tie all of this? Okay. How we basically tie? Uh, uh, we, we talked a lot of about you know different things um, uh, like about cloud, about data, about data engineering. Okay. But how really, really talk about um, about this? 
uh, in in today's world. And I really want to, you know, uh, uh, I gave like few few three snippets. Okay, so from data engineering point of view, okay, or from a cloud point of view, Python is like a very very essential skill. It's like if you do not have, if you do not know Python, I'm sorry to say you do not. You will not fit in industry. You will not, or you will not grow in industry. Okay, so it's like the most, uh, I would say, uh, important, not re- replaceable skill. Okay, it's like you need to know this, and it is uh, cannot be compromised. Okay, okay. There are certain things uh, in all of our resumes, you know, which no is is where recruiters can say, okay, uh, okay, this person does not know TensorFlow. That's fine. And uh, this person does not know, let's say. About uh, recommendation systems, it's fine. Okay, but you need to know Python. Okay, so Python is basically the base of everything, and uh, obviously Python in cloud. We are basically referring to also being able to run codes in the cloud. Okay, and uh, because that forms a base, and through that you can really choose a career or basically specialize. Obviously, you cannot do everything, but you can really specialize. Okay, so eight point five lakhs. I would say this is like. The starting salary or like the average salary, average starting salary, and it can really grow. Okay, people who are with with good companies like Google, Apple, Microsoft, uh, consulting or big four companies, they really can you know earn a very good amount of time, and the uh, and the curve can be very very you know steep. Okay, so your learning curve, your your career growth curve can be really really steep if you. Are really updating yourself in in a very 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 uh, I would say in a, in a good time. Okay, so with all of this, okay, what I'm trying to tell you is, guys, is like at this point of time, cloud is like uh, I'm sure like all of you guys already aware of it. But I'm trying to just you know back it with numbers and and a perspective from the industry lens. Okay, uh, the second is like uh, about the rise of data engineering. Not so data science and data engineering. They're not. They are not same. Data engineers are mostly, you know, building those pipelines, uh, uh, streamlining the processes, you know, by which the entire uh, processes will run. Okay, so we are not talking taking things about t- talking about things in silos. Okay, back two three two three years back, uh, we used to get the data, we used to train the model, and then we used to do the predictions. Okay, so this entire thing. Uh, you should make can typically take a timeline of three to four months to maybe six months. Okay, but now what companies want everything on a real time basis. Okay, everything on a real time basis. So everything will not is not like they will send you the data, then you will build a model, then you will build a PPT or they will build a payout bed and code, and then you will present. No, everything will become operationalized, streamlined, and everything will go in a flow. Okay, when the model fails, obviously. Uh, you guys can intervene and you know uh, check the model, but everything is like in an automated flow. Okay, as users, you can experience it through uh, Uber, Netflix, um, all of these companies which are basically uh, like uh, using uh, I'd say these kind of operational frameworks to basically deploy everything on a real time basis. Okay. So in that case, everything is happening on the cloud, and everything is, um, uh, you know, uh, being uh, being driven uh, from cloud-based uh, uh, fl- workflows, right? And all of this. So if you, even if you talk about, uh, I'm not sure if I've included that slide, uh, but even if you even if you talk about, uh, I would say I have wrote, written someone that AWS, okay. So there are basically three major cloud-based services: AWS, Google Cloud Platform, and Microsoft Azure. Okay. Uh, in all of these three services, what is the one common thing, guys? That is Python. Okay. So AWS, GCP, and Microsoft Azure they provide cloud-based, uh, you know, uh, uh, functionalities. And one thing which is common in all of these is Python. Okay. So all of these three services use Python. Even Databricks, they all use Python uh, to uh, to to um, uh, for for any kind of frameworks which are building within those, right? So in that aspect, okay. So what we are basically referring is that uh, that Python is the winner, okay? So no doubt, 
uh, it has surpassed its competitors like R or MATLAB or, or SAS, right? Or SPSS. In any of these competitors which used to exist previously in the industry, uh, right now, Python is a clear-cut winner. Why it has become a clear-cut winner? Because of its uh, easy integration with, uh, with, you know, machine learning and deep learning libraries, the use of Python in cloud, uh, or the ability to, you know, uh, do much task uh, then as compared to the other, uh, I would say, substitutes like R, right? So the community of Python is much more engaging, much more developing than any of it, any of the others, okay? Now, I will, again, I was speaking for quite, uh, quite some time. Uh, let me know, guys, if you have any questions, any perspectives now. Very would be if you have guys have any any questions, feel free to ask. No, no, uh, uh, I guess that's no for now. But uh, again, I have been reiterating the fact that uh, I'm sure you guys have might have that much of information or I would say uh, uh, perspective about, about, about these terminologies. But in, in a real sense, uh, uh, since data engineering or cloud and the integration of Python, it has become uh, really important or really indispensable in this industry. So across companies, across industries, across sectors or across solutions, um, this this framework is getting deployed, be it pharma, be it finance, be it, uh, I would say, uh, telecom, be it e-commerce, right? Be it even technology, everything is where this kind of, 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 of operations is happening, right? Now, I, I really want to uh, uh, talk about, uh, you know, why Python uh, is also kind of the winner, okay? So three key aspects, scalability, cloud integration, uh, cloud run and integration. That's uh, that's three key points why Python has become important, okay? Now, having said that, I know I have been talking about Python and then the importance of it. Uh, it's not that one has to be really good and uh, has to be really hands-on coding, okay? Um, one can really pick up. The, I would say the learning curve of Python is very, very fast because there is not too much of libraries or not too many, uh, like unlike R, people who already know R can, can you know, vouch for that, uh, but it's not like too varied, okay? So it's very streamlined and uh, that's how uh, you can basically uh, learn Python also. Uh, and then uh, I would say shorter period of time, okay? So scalability, integration, cloud runs, these are all basically uh, aspects of, of what, um, Python offers, okay. Now, in all of this, uh, uh, basically what I wanted you uh, guys to also show, okay. So don't get, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, confused by this uh, flow, which I have prepared for you guys, okay. So this flow basically, you know, talks about how uh, data flows, okay, from, uh, from, your, from your systems, okay. Uh, and these systems can be, <coughs> Legacy systems, traditional databases, flat files, uh, cloud databases, external sources or APIs, okay? So you can have real-time uh, ingestion um, in this part, okay? So you can have something like a real-time ingestion in here, okay? And you can also have like a batch data ingestion or, or, you know, capturing the data. And you can have something like a raw data store, okay? And what you have is like prepare the data and you clean the data. Then what you do is like you create the a kind of clean data set. Okay, and then basically you have these pipelines by which you have your uh, kind of data science or <coughs> sorry, analytics going on, right? Uh, with all of this happening, so you can have forecasting, you can pretty analytics, uh, capacity analysis, even sentiment analysis, so any kind of things that you want, okay? So all of this, so this is the part where we write, really write the codes about model building, but you know, building this entire pipeline, okay? building this entire pipeline, making it end to end and uh, running, uh, you know, that that's really becomes part of the job of a data engineer. Okay. And then it really adds up to dashboards or, or, uh, or, you know, UIs 
uh, that you see, uh, and that really is consumed by the by the business. Okay, so this this becomes like a typical uh, data flow, cloud data flow, <coughs> and I would say in many of these, like the, here, 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 even here, uh, your Python gets used as a very important tool. Okay, to uh, generate the entire entire process, right? So that's basically uh, how it works. Uh, again, I'm I'm sure like in a very short period of time it might be difficult to you know uh, grasp and understand everything. Uh, but but basically this is like the uh, I would say uh, the overarching flow of how it flows from you know uh, from your traditional or, or flat files or databases to to uh, I would say dashboards and and uh, Power BI right reports. And in all of this, we will have pipelines integrated with another so that everything is happening at a, at a, on a real day time basis. Okay. So now what I will do guys, uh, I think uh, we are already nearing in, uh, but what I will do is like, I will quickly show you, okay. Uh, uh, the use of Python, uh, we will we'll try to, you know, stream some real time data on the cloud. Okay. And, uh, uh, I'll not perform any kind of data science work on that, but again, I'll just show you like uh, how Python can be helpful in terms of stream data from the web uh, and uh, you know, use it uh, for my further analysis purpose. Okay. But uh, before that, when I, before I really jump into the, you know, the cloud, uh, showcase some of the cloud computing abilities of Python. Okay. Let me know if you guys have any, any questions. I would be happy to answer that. Uh, before I really jump into the cloud case. Come on guys, I really, I, I really thought that you guys will have some, you know, interesting questions and, uh, and, and perspectives. Let me know. Uh, hi, uh, Arpindu. Hello, hi. Uh, hi, Arpindu, my name is Vaseem. Hi, I'm uh, Vaseem. Uh, uh, I'm working as a data analyst in Amazon. I recently joined this uh, organization. So mm -hmm. I have one issue that uh, sure. I have, uh, I am, I have quite feared uh, uh, when we talk about uh, Python and uh, advanced ML and uh, deployment, any of uh, these models. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have not uh, joined any institute. I have not, uh, you know, I got any dedicated training on this, but I have tried right. to, you know, learn this from open platforms. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, but I do have a fear inside, uh, uh, you know, when thinking about all this. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Can you uh, tell me this, uh, is this fear natural? I mean, I don't know much about Python, advanced Python, but I have learned mm -hmm. uh, till the intermediate level uh, by mm -hmm. on myself. So. Mm -hmm. So I I was uh, dreaming, uh, you know, about to uh, learn the data scientists, all the tools, what are the required and uh, so, yeah, sure. can you, yeah. can you give me a, you know, roadmap and yeah, sort of thing. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Vasim. It's, I think it's a very legitimate question. I, mm -hmm. I have some similar uh, perspectives, uh, you know, so uh doing something you know uh, using the web using the open source uh to to learn versus you know uh, have a more of a guided thing okay obviously everything has its own pros and cons okay uh you know open source has its own pros and cons obviously you can you can be as flexible as you can be obviously it is free if that's you know, <laughs> that's very true of it right i will be i will be very i will be blunt and honest about it right uh but but uh but but, but when you when you really pick up these carriers or really when you really talk, talk about these skill sets, okay. So these are the, I, I think you will uh, everyone will accept that these are very specific skill sets, and uh, these are the use case of these skill sets are not so much available. Okay, uh, what you will get in the in the open source is like how to read a file or you know I'm not saying just how to read a file. You know you will get codes. Okay, I'm not saying that you will not get codes. Or not get exercises, but what you will lack is a use case. Okay, you will you will you will lack examples of business use case of applying technique. Okay, uh, of how it is applied or how this adds to the business value. Okay, 
this versus you know taking up something uh, you know doing some structured keys that becomes uh, uh, that becomes uh, very very interesting and very very uh, uh, important uh, from the from the user perspective right so i really recommend in that case like if you really want to put structure and you really want to put a deadline you really want to put a framework i think that's uh, that's how you should uh, strategize about right so things which you feel like i'm comfortable uh, definitely go it for an open source but things which you feel like okay i need a structure i think definitely taking up something which is uh, you know uh, from institute uh, that that becomes more more important and i would say beneficial in the long run okay i would definitely vouch for that it is beneficial in the long run i hope person i was able to no uh yeah yeah Just I, I think i was uh, i was i always have uh, you know this hypothesis that i was in some wrong direction and the result are not so efficient so i'm not happy with all that um, but uh, yeah i have researched um, this all this about and i think mm -hmm. yeah you know, someone you know some good mentor and a good teacher is very important i think throughout this journey yeah thank you thank you you yeah sure 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 was him okay i also just i i think i guess most of you guys have already seen it uh, i'll just run my quick announcement that we have a small python basic python quiz okay uh, like uh, very very simple questions uh which you guys can you know uh, it's it's mcq and you can really uh just five questions so if you have some time feel free to you know uh, uh just answer those questions it would be a beneficial for us to you know just to have understanding of of of, of what your understanding is and and we can uh, and you know use that information in a, in a very constructive way okay um also uh in in the in the interest of time what i will just show you that this is like a, uh, uh the screen that you see right now it's it's basically some of you guys again my, must have already know it some of you uh, for you people who do not know it it's basically it's a collab environment it's a uh, python or jupyter environment uh, from google okay google cloud okay so there's a there's a cloud based environment where we can run scripts uh, in python and um, the again the benefit of it is uh the ability to you know handle as much amount of data obviously it's a free version so there there are limitations to it but when you really work in aws or, or gcp in the uh uh in the uh in the you know paid version uh you can really work with enormous amount of data and and, and much more efficient time okay so what i will do is like i will just you know run uh i'll not really get into the this the, the scripts uh, one by one uh but i won't really want to show is like what i will try to do in here is like i will be basically uh fetch some tweets uh from uh from twitter on a real time basis so we see like i have uh, I've tried to give a search query of of ipl 2021 and um, i'm trying to extract like 5000 tweets uh, uh using my api handles okay um uh, so uh, so i will be using this uh, this entire python environment which cannot be done to any other uh, obviously it can be done in r but not as much uh, you know uh, in speed or in not much as much i would say uh, faster way as python can be done okay so uh, so basically i'm hitting the web i'm downloading certain tweets on what on april 2021 and what you will see is like i'm get, i would once the tweet is downloaded You'll, you will be so i have total of 502 tweets are downloaded and see to this particular file and now what i will do is like i will just um, you know tweet and run this file and then what i would try to want to show you is this data set okay so uh and i think the final thing which i wanted to really show you is, uh, is this uh so uh so basically what we have in here is basically uh the the ability to uh you know read or, or basically extract or even deploy codes in in python okay so google collab is like one way of uh, of having those uh, codes handy um, in other in other ways there are like in aws and azure you can or in gcp you also have the other platforms 
uh, to run these codes. Okay, the ability is like basically to do it on a more real time basis, handle larger amounts of data, and uh, most straightforwardly automate things. Okay, so even though we said like we want to really focus on automation, uh, but I really wanted to also you know focus on on why this automation is important and how we are doing this in Python. Okay. So for example, this, in this perspective, we, what we did is like, we, we hit, hit the web, we downloaded a certain range of tweets. And now we have that data in our, in our console. Okay. And now I can really, you know, see uh, like these tweets, like if I, you know, let me show you one. So, uh, so in this case, uh, my favorite picture, and obviously I can even, uh, let's see, extract uh, full text. Okay, so I can basically, what I can do is obviously I can, uh, uh, you know, do a lot of things uh, from, from this particular data that I have, which I basically uh, generated. Okay, through the tweets that I extracted, and I can really run sentiment analysis and all of that. Okay, this is one of the applications that I, that we have, but uh, really using this and uh, using the Python seventy to you know uh, run things and doing things on a fly or automate things uh, becomes much more faster, much more easier, and much more uh, acceptable by the entire industry. Okay, so that's that's how this entire I would say uh, the linkage of Python is with cloud and with data engineering. Okay, I uh, I deliberately did not want to get into the code because uh, that's what not really the idea in this one hour session. We wanted to you know talk about uh, how the industry and perspective is hand uh, the data is uh, data is is handled by this industry. Okay, and wh why it is becoming so important to be equipped with uh, languages like Python because it really helps you to. Uh, enable to automate uh, and you know doing things in a much seamless manner. Uh, as we kind of you know uh, hit the clock, okay, I will stop here. And uh, obviously, if you guys have, uh, I will be happy to you know uh, know your perspectives, uh, know your. Uh, I would say, you know, uh, if you guys have any, you know, parting questions, uh, if you guys have any uh, questions to ask, please do, please do let me know. Yes, to, yeah. Yes, sir. Actually, sir, I have a question. Sure. So, like, sir, uh, sir I uh, come from non-technical uh, background uh, from in graduation. Yes. And right now, sir, I'm pursuing my MBA in business analyst. So, mm -hmm. sir, uh, right now I'm pursuing my MBA in business analytics. Sure, so, sure. Sir, Yes, sir. So, sir, uh, I, sir, almost every company they are, sir, allowing only the uh, who are from the technical background or who have already have like experience in the business analytics or data analytics. So, sir, how mm -hmm. I can, sir, go in this role, sir? Because I don't have uh, any like sure. of experience in this role. Neither sure. I belong to technical background. Sure, Manish. It's it's a very valid. Uh... It's a very valid question, uh, Manish. Uh, to uh, to say, yes, sir. Uh, it's it's a very valid question, and I, and I get this. Uh, like even I faced at at certain part of time to be to be honest with you, okay. Uh, but right, really, how you move from from a from a background or from a field which you're not, but into a data science or data engineering field uh, which you want to, right? Even though you do not have the required experience of it. Of it. So uh, really, uh, you know, since I, I since you said like you're already doing an MBA, I would really. Uh, Recommend you to uh, you know build a data science portfolio, which means uh, you know you build a portfolio of projects, uh, showcase different algorithms, different skill sets, uh, different I would say uh, ways of using, and, and give the confidence to the recruiter that you already know. Okay, so what I'm saying by uh, by portfolio, I'm to be very specific. Uh, build around twenty five to thirty projects. Okay, in the uh, it can be in regression, classification, deep learning, um, PySpark, whatever you are learning, right? Put that in the GitHub, put that in the Kaggle, put that in your, um, in your you know, different websites, Stack Overflow, 
and and make this make this profile of yours very compelling participate in hackathons right uh, so with this obviously you will not be able to get an industry experience because unless you get recruited you will not uh, but this really gives the recruiter the confidence that you know the hands on and you have done a lot of work into the field okay so that's something which uh, i really believe that can really change but, sir, but they uh, clearly mention they are like they only allow like the candidate who have the two or three plus year of experience see uh, uh, manish uh, to be honest with you that's always written in a job description okay they will always take that to, they will want to to give experience but does that mean that freshers are not included in this field no that's not right freshers are included in this field you really need to give as i said impression in a different way uh you store in a different way right so if you already have some experience or work experience you can showcase your experience that you were already using analytics and now you know you want to go, do a full full project transition you know the job you know the tools you know the techniques uh you have done like 30 projects uh, in data science or data engineering right yes sir uh and that's how you can basically you know make a very compelling case by which that you cannot see but if you just say that okay i'm doing this training and i'm doing this course they will obviously not you know uh they, there is a chance they might not entertain okay so you need yes, to uh, go from the recruiter's perspective they will always say that they want two to three years of experience but it's not like they will always have people with two to three years experience uh so in that case they also look out for freshers but in that case if you really have you know good projects under your belt uh put put those projects in you know all those websites uh and uh, community websites and platforms right and you and you can really speak about those projects and you can also say about what you have done in your previous work experience let's say with analytics uh, that really makes a, a compelling case okay thank you sir i i hope that uh, helps manish yes sir yes sir means i need to work on projects sir more and more projects 25 to 30 minimum yes sir thank you sir sure okay what else okay uh let me know guys if you have uh you know uh, if you want to reach out you can always reach out uh can we know can, can we know yeah priyanka you will be i think you will be uh, made aware of the answers of the poll uh so uh i i think the results will be sent to you uh to all the participants who are attending okay so right so the, those answers will be possibly sent to you in the link uh and uh, this uh, those questions were just you know way to check they were not really mandatory or they were not really you know deciding of what and how much you know really want to do a sense check on how much you know about that thing. so so uh <laughs> no i would say ground breaking or uh, you know defining questions uh, but definitely we'll try to communicate you the answers of the poll sure yeah i i really hope you guys uh, got some uh, i would say definitive perspective about what data engineering is what cloud is and how python is really really important in this uh, entire uh, perspective okay and uh, the take away is i would say is like really uh, uh, if you really are interested really you know focusing start focusing on, on python as a skill set as a key skill set and make yourself aware about other cloud techniques like as i mentioned aws gcp or azure uh, which are the cloud platforms which all companies are using so either of it they are all using so even if you are knowing one of it you really become become highly demanded by the organization okay so uh i i think that's the first step so uh, if you guys want to reach out uh, you can always reach out to you know uh, sonia uh, sonali or or the team from iv uh if you want to have you have any queries uh, about or what courses do we have right if you have any technical queries if you want to you know guidance feel free to reach out to me on linkedin or even uh, on my email so this is my email id if you really want to connect feel free to drop a drop a chat i will definitely um uh, get back to you 
okay and uh, uh, i really hope i really believe that uh, you guys were able to take away uh, some very i would say definitive and interesting uh, perspectives through, through this entire session excuse me sir no oh. yep sir uh, i'm from a non technical background mm -hmm. on sure, go, go ahead and sir i'm Manson, pursuing yeah. graduation in bsc life science mm, mm -hmm. like i'm from a medical field sure so sir uh, like i am entering into this field it's all new for me i have not done mm -hmm. maths also mm -hmm. so uh, i studied power bi and sql from ishani ma'am and pratik sir Mm -hmm. And sir, uh, now I want to ask that, uh, like, how should I go further in this field and go deep into this, or uh, in the profile of data analyst? So, uh, one thing, Mansi, is like, uh, so I have a few friends, a very close, uh, I'd say, uh, like my college mates who were from life sciences, and uh, they did PhD and all of that. I'm sure that you you might have your own ambitions, uh, but even in life sciences, there is a lot of uh, role is itself. If if you uh, uh, really you know later on choose a very specific niche shape part, uh, uh, so role of R or Python, right? Or else, if you really want to get into the corporate, really get into the life sciences field. So just just to tell you, just to give you a perspective, and I think this will really make you happy that. a uh, company really have a life science team okay pharma life sciences has become a very very important uh, uh i would say like customer analytics or risk analytics life sciences is also a very integral part of teams okay uh, uh, so that domain that you have it's very important okay you just need to know the right skills the right uh, techniques so yeah you said you already learned excel and nsql uh, right uh, through pratik and ishani Uh, so yeah, I, I think you should continue. You should target maybe R or Python, uh, and also some visualization like Tableau. You have already learned Power BI, which is great, right? Uh, so uh, uh, I, I think the definitely the next step is something that if you if really go into learning with Python and R, and R that really completes a one layer of cycle, okay, uh, of your of your learning. And uh, as I said, your domain is demanded by the industries, pharma, life sciences. These are Uh, there are units in the industries. Uh, there are a lot of companies like Pfizer, Moderna. Uh, all of these are drugs companies. They, they have a lot of. There are a lot of uh, uh, IQVIA, Roche. They are, lot, they are demanding a lot of people from life sciences. Okay, so continue with the studies. Do well. Uh, equip with 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 these with these skill sets. I think uh, that really makes you a very compelling candidate. Sir, I have also done uh, the data visualization using R. Now I'm left with uh, Python. Anything okay. else like uh, I should do? Ah uh, no, as of now, I think if you if you really complete with Python, okay. Uh, Sir, I'm not in Python. Only Python is left. And what else? If you will help me out. That that's what I'm saying. It's like uh, at least for for Python and 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 Power BI or Tableau or whatever you've done. try to may build as many projects as you can so for your life sciences i think you should really watch out for like what kind of data that you have and try to you know link with your domain okay uh, i'm sure there are a lot of 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 health related data or, or data in your field okay so try to build as many projects as much possible okay not just so i did this course will i get the project uh there are a lot of uh, free projects you can really scout for data sets in kaggle you can you can really scout for data in okay. uh, i take from kaggle but the, uh, i got the data sets but i want mm -hmm. project so uh, from the uh, so, kaggle so yeah so so if you have the data sets generally we have a data description so you, you you can make your own prompt statement okay and that prompt statement becomes a project okay so you can really focus on let's say on healthcare and uh, and you can it's not like someone has to give you a project you can you can really uh, make projects of your own let's say You really want to, uh, you know, focus on what what was the impact of COVID vaccine, and there's a lot of open data sets. Uh, you can really, you know, develop models upon it and 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 publish that project. Okay, so what I'm saying is that you know your domain, you know what what is happening in the domain. So if, so I come from economics domain of this, so I know right, uh, like uh, data sets related to economics or what kind of form statements, right? 
So similarly, in your field, in your, you, you, even if you do not have those projects, what I'm saying is that uh, I'm answering is like, since you're learning from, from life sciences, do not do banking projects, okay? Or do not do some kind of risk projects. Like, okay, do something which is related to your own domain, which can really, you know, uh, add up to your profile. Okay, sir. And so, uh, like, uh, I was studying linear regression few days back when I was studying data visualization uh, using R. So mm -hmm. I couldn't get the topic. I tried a lot, but I really couldn't get it. So I just dropped it. I think these topics are pretty pretty simple. Uh, again, depends upon. Uh, I, again, it's it's not within my purview right now to start explaining it. But these these topics are very. Uh, very simple and I would say like uh, whatever you choose how you choose there's a lot of resources there. there's a lot of resources out there uh, I'm not sure if you're doing things from IV but uh, like R or Python so even like even I do it uh, so yeah I, I think either of it uh, there are a lot of resources really maybe you can watch out some videos or, or uh, you know there is there's a there is a some there is a there's a certain book called ISLR Introduction to Statistical Learning. So which I always recommend to folks who uh, want to join in this industry. So I would recommend you that introduction to statistical learning. It's pretty stats heavy, uh, but uh, it really makes a lot of concepts clear. Okay. So if depending upon you want to watch watch a video and learn or read a book, or I would say there are a lot of blogs in analytics with there in Kaggle. Uh, also, there are a lot of simple blogs. So start reading that. I think uh, that can really help you. Okay. Apart from that, I think if you're doing it from IB, you can always access the recorded sessions where, where uh, there are sessions about uh, linear regression. So it is necessary to do the algorithm part. Yes, it is. It is. Okay. It is. So that also the, uh, I will get from the videos and the... yeah, yeah, you should. Yes. Okay. And so uh, what about like, uh, will I get a job after the graduation by pursuing the certificate courses or I have to do uh, like uh, MSc or MBA in some data uh, science? No, 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 no. I, <laughs> I am not a big fan of your, uh, uh, of MSc or MBA in data science. I think uh, these these are like, uh, you know, uh, uh, pretty expensive, I would say. Okay. I would always, I always recommend people to, you know, take up jobs first, gain some experience and uh, switch. Okay. What if you can get the same job uh, with the same, uh, without spending that amount of money? Okay. So I will always prefer take up jobs. Obviously you can, after one year, two years, if you want to add an MBA to it or add an MSc to it, you can. Uh, I would always prefer that. Uh, but I will see like the ROI of that because these are really expensive courses. So uh, yeah, you can, uh, you will get definitely decent jobs with this. And obviously if you want to do, take some experience and of course that, do that, those, those, those do take those kind of courses if you want, okay? Because then you will, after getting some industry experience, uh, you can basically, uh, you know, uh, make your profile more compelling. Hence, it's not necessary for pursuing masters right I'm now. Not right? so necessary, not right now. Not right yeah. now. Yeah. I should really go to the industry, really see how it is, rather than spending another couple of years, another, you know, uh, some more money uh, and all of that. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sure, sure, Mansi. So, Shivam, here you can, you know, whatever data sets, let's say you want to uh, build up a dashboard with COVID data set, you can basically go here and, and download it. Okay. So, go on to the data sets, go on to the data, and, you know, download. So, uh, you can you can even see some codes. Uh, you know, something like understanding and visualization. So someone has really already done that, what you have done, what you want to do. Okay, so country-wise, so, uh, and all of that. So, so you can really use the data sets option within Kaggle and, uh, you know, uh, basically create visualizations from that. I think it's not loading for me. Yeah. So that's that's how you can basically uh, 
you know use kaggle uh, for uh, i would say uh, using any data sets finding any data sets that you want Hope that helps, Shubham. Is there any possibilities to get business questions also in, in Kaggle? In Kaggle is just generally, uh, uh, it's uh, generally the case that we build, uh, there are more of technical, okay. So business questions, I think you should uh, go in analytics with them. So they have got good uh, business questions related projects okay so i think that's that's a more better uh, uh, platform av uh analytics with them so that's this is the place I'll, i'm just typing in Great. Cool. I uh, I will now. Uh, sorry, guys. I also have a call in in the next like, uh, nine minutes. I would say. So uh, I already want to have this uh, make this a wrap. And I hope you guys uh, enjoy the session, follow the session, uh, have some have your own takeaways from the session. Okay. Feel free to reach out to any part, any of the IV team or. Uh, to me uh, through email, okay, and uh, we'll be happy to you know uh, answer hear you and answer any doubts if you have. And uh, yeah, it's great. It's great to have all of you. And uh, I will see you guys the next time. Okay, till then, thank you all. Have a good day. Have a good uh, weekend, and take care. And I will see you guys again. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, sir. Thank Have a good time, all. sir.